Welcome to Mollygraph Matters. I'm talking today with Rebecca White, author of the SR City Mollygraph on place-based development research, conceptual and methodological advances in studying youth development in context. This discussion focuses on levels mentioned in the Mollygraph. Rebecca, a section of your Mollygraph deal with levels. What levels are you talking about and how can they inform development of science? Right, thank you. I think one of the most powerful ways that the developmental sciences can benefit from our cultural developmental place-based framework is in thinking about the ways in which it supports both theorists and researchers to explore the science of development in context beyond some of its current limitations. So um, I have to give a little bit of like a Brian from Brenner mini, mini talk so that we can have some shared language. So as most of us know, Braun from Brenner's contextual levels offers us some shared language to connect activity space methods with key aspects of a developing person's context. Braun from Brenner established microsystems and mesosystems as closely related aspects of the ecology of human development. The microsystem level has been defined as a pattern of activities, social roles, and interpersonal relations experienced by a developing person in a given face-to-face -face setting. And what this means is that any setting in which a developing person has face-to-face -face or even face-to-object or symbols um, types of interactions is a microsystem. So common examples of microsystems during childhood and, a lot, and, and adolescence, for instance, might include the home environment, um, the school or classroom environment, a daycare environment, uh, the neighborhood environment it can also include extracurricular activity settings like dance studios and soccer fields, church. To recognize that developing individuals spend time in more than one microsystem across their daily lives, both within days and um, at a smaller scale of time, across days at a larger scale of time, and across developmental time. So to recognize that individuals spend time in more than one microsystem, Brian from Brenner used the concept of the mesosystem, which he defined as a system of two or more microsystems. So contrary to that common kind of like Russian dolls metaphor represented by the nested circles, the mesosystem isn't actually outside the layer of the microsystems. Rather, it is in its most complete sense, the mesosystem represents the totality of a developing person's microsystems at any given point in developmental time. So you can think about um, a school-aged child wakes up in their often in their home environment, tr travels outside the neighborhood to get to school, might go to an after-school program, might swing by the convenience store on the way home, swing by a friend's house, hang out down at the park, whatever they're doing in their day-to-day -day environment, each of those locations or places is a microsystem. And together they comprise the um mesosystem. One of the major critiques of the study of development in context that remains, despite Brown from Brenner's theoretical, theoretical advancements that are decades old, is that as developmental scientists, we mostly study human development in a setting or two. Rarely do we ever uh, attempt or have the opportunity to contextualize development in the multiple settings that individuals traverse across their regular day-to-day -day lives. Furthermore, and I think this is really important, and it's particularly important when we think about the intersection of different social positions that have um, different opportunities and constraints. When we as researchers decide to study development in a singular context or in a context or two, for example, the neighborhood context like I do, or the school context, when we as researchers decide to study development in a context or two, we are making a priori decisions to highlight some microsystems within a person's developmental mesosystem while completely ignoring all the others. So we cannot advance a comprehensive understanding of human development in context by just studying a microsystem or two at a time. A priori selection of microsystems and by extension mesosystems hampers a comprehensive scientific understanding of development in context. 
activity space frameworks like those employed in our cultural developmental place based framework can be used to address these issues, especially because activity space approaches do not require researchers to make a priori assumptions about which microsystems and therefore mesosystems to study. Activity space methods in our framework are focused on exactly where kids go and spend time and can be used to capture developmental mesosystems and substantially advance the study of development and context across diverse youth, settings, and places. Read more about this topic in the monograph issue, Place-Based Developmental Research. Conceptual and methodological advances in studying youth development in context by Witherspoon, White, Bemka, et al. If you like this video, consider watching our Monograph Matters playlist. For additional resources related to this and other issues of the Monographs of the Society for Research in Child Development, please visit monographmatters.srcd.org.